Hi, everybody. This is Scott McLeod. Welcome to another episode of the Coronavirus Chronicles. I'm delighted to have with me today Mary Beth Azanella, who is the Director of Educational Technology for the Jeffco Public Schools here in Colorado. With her is Caleb Munguia, who's an Educational Technology Specialist. They have been busy ramping up remote learning for the district with many colleagues and friends along the way. Uh, welcome, Mary Beth and Kayla. Let's just dive right in. Uh, what has been Jeffco's response so far to the global pandemic and the learning challenge that comes with it? I think uh, for us, Jeffco's um, response was fast and furious. Um, we are in our third week of remote learning, and we've had spring break too. So really, almost a month ago to the day, um, we started hearing the rumblings um, that we were going to do this. And so um, I'm fortunate to have a really talented educational technology team of TOSAs. And we very quickly put together some best practices, um, some potential training schedules, those sorts of things. So in the event it did happen, we were as prepared as we could be. So schools got news, um, I believe on uh, the second week of March, midweek, that this might happen. Um, they received confirmation of that on Thursday. On Friday, we sent every child home with a device. We took apart carts. Um, some of our schools were one-to-one, -one, but we took apart um, carts and those sorts of things and sent students home with devices so that they had those and pa paper packets and what we thought they would need um, to be successful in learning for whatever period of time that was. And then on Monday, my amazing team offered 25 sessions of Google Classroom. And so we stood up Google Classroom and trained teachers the entire day of Monday. And we went live with students on Tuesday. And awesome. ever since then, we've just been supporting teachers. And in our district, Mondays are days for um, optional professional learning to support teachers remotely um, and days for PLCs and planning. And then Tuesdays through Fridays, um, were remote learning with students. Kayla, what would you add? I would just add that, yeah, we definitely took the remote learning by the reins. Um, it took us a week to plan. It took us one day to kind of deploy, and then we implemented on Monday. And that's not to say it hasn't gone without a hitch, but it's definitely been more successful than any of us could have ever planned for, cool. without a doubt. So, you know, you've got 160 something schools in Jeff Co. You've got a whole lot of students and families. How are you uh, handling students and families who don't necessarily have internet access? So that's been one of our struggles. Um, I, we had the foresight, we, our, our partners in IT, had the foresight to order some hotspots. So we've kind of pieced together a number of uh, things. Again, I mentioned some of our students went home with paper packets and the device while we problem solved through the um, digital access, the internet access, if you will. So our Jeffco Schools Foundation is partnering with us. We have hotspots. We, we do have more demand than we have hotspots currently. As you know, they're on back order. And then we're leveraging things like um, the service providers, uh, free internet access or that sort of thing. But I will say that has been um, one of the stumbling blocks for our um, district. I think we've handled it remarkably well, but overall in our district, we do have about a, um, a mid thirties free and reduced lunch rate. And so a pretty substantial impact of those 86,000 students and their families. It is um, something that we can, we've worked hard to um, overcome and continue to work to overcome. We still have, um, some students that don't have access and we're working through those on a case-by-case -case situation now. Got it. I, I know I've worked with a lot of teachers, a lot of support staff in schools on workarounds in the meantime because our district is working on um, providing funds and funding to students that need that access and cannot um, access, you know, Wi-Fi itself. 
Um, but I've worked personally with uh, a lot of staff in how to turn on parent hotspots. You know, if does does the parent have a phone? How do I turn on a hotspot? And just the things that the the little workarounds that can help in the meantime. Um, teachers are reaching out and asking for that support. Great. Yeah. So I was really excited to talk with the two of you because Jeffco has this Generations 21st Century Learning Initiative where you're really focused on deeper learning and authentic performance tasks and student agency. And so how has that translated into sort of the remote modality? Well, we're living agility, our, our Jeffco generation skill of agility and adaptability <laughs> on a daily, hourly, and normal right, right. basis. Um, and so I would say there's that piece of it. I think that like all schools, there's a, a curve to this. You know, the first um, week or so, it was all about logistics. How do I make this work? What do I do here? Um, we're seeing that transition, especially with the announcement that we'll be continuing in a remote learning space for the remainder of this year to start thinking about how do we move from synchronous learning to asynchronous learning opportunities? How do teachers connect with kids on a daily basis? Because we know those relationships are key um, to students feeling connected and successful, but then how are we providing um, lessons and opportunities that allow them to demonstrate that knowledge in different sorts of ways. And so com in complete transparency, we're a little bit all over the board in that regard, but we do see um, growth over that short period of time towards that end. Kayla works directly with our teachers, so she probably has some um, specific stories she might share. There's a definite evolution of questions being asked in the field, right? So week one was very technical. We offered a lot of tool training, as Mary Beth mentioned, like Google Classroom training, how to use Google Classroom, how to get my kids on these tools and using them. Um, and even for the teachers who had been utilizing technology, just that remote piece of it. Um, and whereas maybe starting at the end of last week and definitely this week, mm -hmm. people are starting to ask more content related questions and questions about balance. That has been probably my top question this week is, what's the recommended time to be online? And right now we don't have recommended times, but we're really moving towards what is a remote learning environment versus an online learning environment. And so trying to build in those generation skills and then people are asking questions about content. How can I get my kids to do science experiments at home without the necessary materials or, you know, just kind of all of these questions that are evolving from how do I use this tool to how do I instruct effectively with students in this environment. So that's exciting. Cool. For sure. Yeah. So what does an average day look like for an elementary student or a high school student or I can tell you about my two kids. So I have an eighth grader and an 11th grader. Um, both of them are either, their teachers are either in Google Classrooms or Schoology. Um, they meet with their teachers. It's probably about once a week. It's not every day, every class. Um, and then they have about, um, my daughter does maybe two to three hours of work a day. Um, she has all of her classes, including theater. So she was in her room recording herself singing and then submitting it to her theater teacher. Um, and my son is probably about the same, probably three to four hours a day doing a lot of essay writing and things like that that require a little bit more time. And I would just add that we are fortunate to have a superintendent who really is progressive in his thinking and has allowed teachers to embrace this period as a cycle of continuous improvement. And so, you know, we started someplace, we're listening regularly to our parents, we're listening to our teachers, we're listening to our students. And um, rather than say it's this many minutes or it looks this way, he's empowered our educators to try and to learn and to grow. And I think that's encouraged each of them to take risks um, in terms and finding the right balance. Because we're a large school district, as I mentioned, 86,000 students. We have rural, suburban, mountain, um, 
uh, urban dis, um, schools in our system. And so it can't look the same, just like our brick and mortar classrooms don't look the same. And so, you know, we've asked them to think about balance, you know, think about um, the emotional well being of our kids and um, giving them time to. Um, you know, get outside and to connect with their families, all those things that our national experts are telling us. And then finding the right balance for our kids and helping them continue to grow, but also understanding growing in the same way um, is, not, is not possible in this period of time. Absolutely. So uh, as you think about Jeffco's response, particularly maybe from the leadership side of things, um, what has gone really well so far? What did Jeffco do that seemed to be great? And, you know, at this stage of the game, where do the challenges or sticking points seem to be? So when you ask me that question, I get goosebumps and probably Kayla does too. I am so incredibly proud of the work that our teachers, I mean, they have embraced this um, and have um, jumped in with both feet and taken risks and figured it out. And it certainly isn't without its hiccups and it's certainly not without um, frustration and you know figuring some different pieces out. But um, the level of success has far exceeded my initial expectations. Um, our students are engaged, our teachers are excited. They're tired. You know, and we're trying to help them be balanced too and saying you don't have to do everything perfectly. Um, and so uh, I've never been more proud to be a part of um, our school district than I am right now. Cool. For sure. I would say I would mirror those things. Um, one thing that I think is really going well is uh, we send out a daily briefing to our um, staff and community. And so as a staff member, I feel very connected and I feel like I have all of the information of what's going on in the system. Um, as a parent, I feel the same way, right? I, I get those parent connections from the district level daily. And it's, um, it's nice to have that information and the links to the different resources. Um, as Mary Beth mentioned, you know, we, we definitely are moving forward at full speed. And um, in that, you get hiccups. People get confused with things and people have questions. And um, we've created office hours, Google Meet office hours, but also we have Schoology as an LMS. And we highly encourage people to ask questions there so that they can reach the masses when we respond. Um, so Schoology's kind of been a saving grace in this as well. Cool. Yeah. We're kind of near the end of our time. Anything else you want to share? I would just say you asked what's what's been a challenge and I think um, just the number of tools that are being offered to people at low cost when they've not used those tools or tools that you've been some schools have been using and then trying to integrate you know the expectations around single sign-on and some of those kinds of things has been you know a challenge and then our vendors are also responding as quickly as possible and adding upgrades and enhancements and those sorts of things and trying to stay on top of the communication about, oh, Google Meet worked this way yesterday, today it's working <laughs> this way. Oh, now we have a secure version of Zoom. Those sorts of things have been a, a challenge, but not unexpected. And I would just say that uh, super proud of our teachers and our kids are amazing. Yes. Awesome. Definitely. Go Jeffco. We, <laughs> we rock this remote learning. Awesome. I can't be more proud to be a part of this district, for sure. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time today. I know how incredibly busy both of you are as part of the instructional technology team for the entire system. Appreciate your time. Appreciate all your efforts and your willingness to share. We'll sign off on episode, this is going to be 16, and um, look forward to uh, talking with you further in the future. Hope you both get some rest. Thanks. Thanks, Scott.